Now from Granville and Del Boy to Pop Larkin and Detective Frost, our next guest has played some of Britain's most loved characters. And as he celebrates a remarkable 50 years in the business, Sir David Jason is sharing the lessons he's learned in a new autobiography. Ah, just Gorgeous. genius. And Sir David Jason joins us now. What a pleasure. Hi. How lovely to talk to you. Thank you for talking to us today. Um, We've, uh, we've got, I've got the book here, uh, David, and, uh, and it's... Uh, there you go, Lessons I've Learned. Oh. Uh, that's, uh, that's David's book. And um, your other memoirs um, were sort of about life's lessons. Um, this, is, uh, this is a serious lesson here. There's all sorts of things that you can learn from it. Lesson number one, start of the book, a grapefruit pip. <laughs> Why that one? <laughs> well, <laughs> um, good morning to you too, by the way. I was at good afternoon. Lovely to be with you again once more. Um, well, uh, to answer that question is, uh, when I was asked to, uh, would I be uh, able to write another book, and I sort of said at first, no, I couldn't have said everything that I needed to say before, but I've got nothing left to say. So they sort of said, well, you could make it anecdotal, you know, lessons, things you've learned over your career and bits that people have told you or bits you've learned. So I thought, oh, OK. And so I sat down and I thought, where do I start? How do you start a book like this? And uh, I thought, um, I used to have breakfast in my little flat in London. And at the fashion at that time, which was the 60s, you had to start your breakfast with half a grapefruit. Mm -hmm. It was like, you know, the very trendy thing to do. We were all doing it, all eating healthily. <laughs> and... Um, I, uh, I won't tell you the whole story because you read it in the book, but uh, I nearly choked anyway on this pip and I looked at this pip and the pip looked at me and I thought, uh, wait a minute, the, that's an unusual story, unusual way to start a book. And then that led me on to, uh, well, how did I entertain in that little tiny flat which had a little table against a wall? And then that brought me into the leading lady and the leading man in No Sex, Please, We're British, which then started a journey through my career of bits that I haven't told before, perhaps, or some bits that I had. So I started with the, with the Pip story and it led me through to all the other bits in the book. And you're also a big believer in not turning down opportunities, no matter what they are, because everything that comes along in life, you have something to learn from. And you think, looking at your glittering career, that everything would have been glamorous and wonderful, but there were moments where it wasn't. And one of them, I think, was for an advert that you did for a well-known tea brand. Oh, uh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I don't think I can mention the... Um... The product, well, I suppose you can because if you show the clip, uh, <laughs> I think we've got we're it. gonna, we're <laughs> gonna, David, we are going to. Uh, you're gonna see it. Yeah, do you oh, want to look? Good luck. Let's have a look. Here, it is, here it is. <laughs> Hello, I'm going to demonstrate how PG Tips Big Bags gets the tea you can really taste out into the pot. As you can see, there's so much room inside this big bag that the tea leaves can circulate like mad, letting out their really good tea taste. In a smaller bag, it'd obviously be more restricted. On the other hand, it would be able to see more clearly. PG Tips Big Bags make it easier to get more flavour in the pot. Which means more flavour in the cup! You see, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> David, that's a perfectly good advert. How long were you in that water for? <laughs> yes. Now, that, this, this, I don't think... I couldn't see it, I couldn't see it, but I have seen the snapshot of it before. Did they show the, the sugar cube? Yeah, uh, yeah. There was a few of that being yeah, dropped in, floating Chucking the, the big sugar cubes at you, yeah. Oh, right, OK, cos the, the bit... That bit that I've seen before is they didn't show the sugar cube. Well, that nearly ended my career, that, because the, they had the props guys up on a, a gantry throwing that uh, sugar cube, giant sugar cube, down on, onto me or into the teacup, as it were. Well, the first few times we did it, it wasn't heavy enough because it wouldn't sink. So you had this sugar lump that came in and just stood there for a minute or two and then went like this. So it didn't look like a sugar lump. So they kept on, the director kept saying, make it heavier, make it heavier. Well, eventually it took about four props boys to lift this sugar cube like this. And then they, they, they here it comes, they dropped it. Well, it went past and touched my nose oh my as it went through into the teacup. Well, 
that could have very nearly, had it hit, hit me on the head, it would have been killed, David Jason killed by sugar cube, <laughs> yeah, which wouldn't not. have been a very good epitaph. <laughs> no. um, so uh, you also say one, one thing that's very important, one of the lessons you've learned is to trust the audience. Yes, yeah. That, that, well, that was my, probably one of my best lessons, and that came from a, a lovely actor I was working with uh, called Ron Moody. And uh, I, I won't go into the long and boring story, but basically what happened, I was having to do a front cloth um, that's in front of the curtains while they shifted scenery behind, and uh, I was going out as directed and I was dying the death. I mean... You have to learn these things, and if you've never died the death, you don't know what it's like. It really is, as the expression says, it's a bit like dying. And uh, I wasn't getting any laughs. It was just, like, terrible. It was horrendous going out. So I said to Ron Moody, uh, I said, Ron, I'm going out. I haven't got any joke. Can you give me some jokes? I can't. I'm going out there and nobody's laughing. And he said, all right, then, what's the problem? And I said, I'm doing as directed, and it's not working. So he said, all right, who are you going to listen to? Are you going to listen to the director or are you going to listen to the audience? And I stopped for a moment and I looked at Ron Moody and I said, I'm going to listen to the audience. He said, there's your answer. Wow. So from that moment on, that was such a lesson to learn and I have used it ever since that moment. All those years ago in Peter Pan... And it has kept me in good stead because I realise that my job is my job is to entertain the audience, them. It's nothing to do with me. It's you that has to be pleased. And how I do it, how I please you, well, that's up to me, but I've got to entertain you. So that stuck with me. And I think, you know, uh, a few other people should learn that lesson because it's uh, quite an important one. Well, the we, lesson never, we never is listen to the director here. <laughs> Rest assured with that. <laughs> so, I, so I understand. <laughs> yeah. there are, there's other lessons that you've learned as well that you're able to pass on to people that will read the book, and one of them comes from a very good friend of yours and obviously colleague too, Ronnie Barker, and he was talking about the collective of people working on a show together and how important everyone is. Yeah, well, you probably... Uh, you two, you've been doing it long enough in that, and in order to keep your uh, job and keep yourselves happy... Uh, I know because I've actually been uh, with you on this show, that you it's a team effort. You rely on everybody, yeah. you know, and the expression that comes out of, uh, of that book, which Ronnie Barker said, is that you are your own currency. Spend it wisely. So that means that you yourself, in order to achieve what you want, you need all of those people around you. You need the cameraman, the sound crew, the props boys, the girls, the makeup. Everybody's part of that team. And if you don't treat them with respect, you know, you're not going to have a good team and it's going to fall apart. So that was a, a, a note, again, that I learnt from Ronnie Barker. Wow. Um, David, it's always a massive pleasure to talk it to really you. I wish is. we could talk more. There are there so are many so things many I wanted to talk about. We I looked at it this morning and thought, oh my God, he's got his own helicopter. Anyway, we haven't got time now, unfortunately, which is a shame. But this is the book, Lessons I've oh. Learned. This is David's uh, 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 new book and, uh, and a little bit of everything in there for everybody. Thank you so Lovely much, to see David. You. you take care of yourself. Bye bye. Thank you, too. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Oh, lovely man. I love uh, him. Right.